welcome back to the Gourmet Pantry. Today we're having a look at dressing a pheasant, which basically means taking it from in the feather, i.e. unplucked, unprepared, un-everything, and getting it to a level where it looks like something you'd buy from the supermarket and take home and cook without any quibbles whatsoever. I always think it's important to know exactly how to prepare meat and where it comes from. I personally think it's a bit hypocritical when people are prepared to eat the meat, but get really squeamish when it comes to preparing the meat. And hopefully after this video, one or two more people might be happy to take a bird out of the feather and plonk it on a plate from start to finish all themselves. It really is so rewarding. So, first things first. One of the major ways pheasant differs from chicken is that chicken is comparatively quite a tasteless meat. And although you can add huge amounts of flavor to it in rubs and marinades and all that kind of thing, pheasant has its own really rich flavor. A lot of people refer to as a gamey flavor. Now if you shoot a pheasant or you get a pheasant that's been freshly shot and you strip it and eat it that very day, it'll taste rather like chicken. But the lovely thing to do with pheasant is let them hang for one or two, maybe three days, depending on the environment. And that enhances this beautiful, rich, gamey flavor, which comes across all of your dishes and gives the pheasant a really distinctive taste. If you're lucky enough to be able to get hold of some fresh pheasant, all you do is hang it in a cool, cold environment where flies and little bugs won't have access to it. What a lot of people do is they just cover it in netting and hang it by the neck outside in an area that's not going to be hit by the sun. If you're just starting out and never had pheasant before and this is your first foray, firstly, well done. Secondly, perhaps don't let it hang for as long. You can always experiment with the time you leave it later on. But to start with, it's probably a good idea to keep that gamey taste low and build it up over time because it is a very different flavor. And if you're not accustomed to it, some people don't like it instantly. Although I guarantee you after a few times, you'll learn to love it very quickly. When people talk about a brace of pheasant, they normally talk about two. Typically, it's a cock and a hen. A cock is the male bird and the hen is the female bird. You can always tell them apart because the cock has really rich red feathers and very long tail feathers which it uses to strut its stuff and attract all those ladies. The hen pheasant comparatively is much more plain in color. They're the ones who get to do the choosing in the animal kingdom so they don't need to be as brightly colored. In America pheasants are called ring neck roosters purely because they've got this white band around their neck which sets them apart from a lot of other game birds. I'm going to teach you two different ways of plucking a bird. First one's going to be the standard pluck, gut, and ready to go. And with the hen bird, we're gonna be skinning it rather than plucking it. It's much faster, much easier to get the breasts out, and sometimes you find the legs can be quite badly shot. So it's a great way of just taking the best meat straight out. If, on the other hand, the bird's healthy and it's been shot perfectly straight in the head, all the meat on the body is gonna be beautiful to eat, and you don't wanna lose the legs, so I'd recommend the plucking approach for those. Starting with the cock bird, we're gonna pluck this from start to finish. Take out the tail feathers individually, or in groups of two or three, but try not to take too much more that. Apart from anything else, they're very strongly connected. And secondly, if you put too much pressure on the bird, and this is the key to all the plucking, you might tear the skin, and that's what we really want to avoid. Once the tail feathers are out, starting on the back, take three or four feathers at a time. Have a bag handy so you can put all the feathers in, because they do end up going everywhere if you're not careful. Slowly work your way around the whole bird, and when you come across any damaged skin due to where they've been shot, be very careful around that area, because the last thing you want to do is tear off any more skin than you have to. The skin keeps all of that moisture and fat in the bird. If you take all of that off, it'll be very hard to keep the meat moist and you might end up with very dry meat, which is what puts a lot of people off eating pheasant but it can be a beautifully cooked meat if you're careful on the plucking process. With the wings, have a little look at how they articulate. We're looking at cutting the wings off about where you probably say the elbow is. So pluck up to that point, but there's no need to go past it. Score all the way around that joint and bend it until it breaks in the direction that it wouldn't normally bend. The only connection between the wing and the body will probably be one or two tendons and maybe a little bit of flesh. So take your knife and just snick straight through that and chuck the wing in the bit. With the legs, there's a very definite line between where the flesh stops and the scaly feet start. It's on that joint that separates them. We're going to snap the legs. So again, same as the wing, score all the way around it, bend it in the direction it wouldn't normally bend until you hear that snap, and then snick a knife through the remaining flesh and chuck the foot in the bin. When you're plucking the main feathers off the bird, you want to keep the skin as taut as possible. If you don't, it's much more likely the skin's going to tear, which as I said, is something we're really trying to avoid here, to keep the meat in its absolute pristine condition. Once you've plucked the bird to a reasonable level, it's 
probably a little bit more tidying up to do, but don't worry about that for now. We're gonna start taking out the insides. If you feel up at the front of the bird, just in between where the breasts are, just about here, that's where all their crop is, everything they've been eating, it's stored here until it makes its way through their system. So make a little incision and then scoop out all of that crop because we certainly don't want that in the food. And discard it just as you are with all the feathers. When it comes to taking the head off, a couple of centimeters above the top of the body, just put a knife through, a heavy knife, hammer it through, or use a strong pair of kitchen scissors. In my opinion, these are one of the most useful things you can have in the kitchen. And I'll link the ones below that I use in my kitchen most often. They can save so much time and also don't damage your favorite knives when you're working with bone, as in this case. Now we're gonna look at the other end and getting out the rest of the guts that are inside. If you feel all the way down the breasts, until that to that point at the bottom. Just underneath that point, you're gonna put your knife in and slice from there all the way down to its bum. That's gonna create a big opening, enough for you to get two or three fingers in. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna work your fingers against the rib cage, pulling everything away, and scoop it all out and discard it. It can get a little bit smelly, but if you're gentle and careful, the fewer organs you rupture inside, the less smell there is. Once you've done that, tidy up the rest of the plucking and try and cover any damaged areas with any loose skin. Give it a bit of a wash inside to get rid of any of that blood. Bend the legs up into the body, and there you are. Now with this hen bird, we're gonna have a look at a much faster way of getting that meat out of there. You can end up losing the flesh on the legs, but if they've been shot in the legs, this is the perfect way to take out breast meat and leave the flesh that you're not gonna be eating. On the other hand, if the meat on the legs is good, this is quite a wasteful method, so you've gotta sum up whether it's worth it or not for you. Flip the bird onto its back and run your fingers down its breast until you get to the point at the bottom. With a sharp knife, pinch a bit of the skin and snick through it. Put your fingers inside the hole in the skin and tear it up towards the head, exposing the flesh of the breast. Put your hands on either side of the breast and peel the skin on the sides down and away so you expose even more of that lovely flesh. Next, go back to the bottom of the breast where the point is, put your fingers underneath and rip the whole breasts up and towards the head. This exposes all of the organs below, but on the whole, it doesn't tend to rupture any, so the smell is really minimal. The breasts are still connected to the body in three places, on the wings and around the neck. Again, take your strong kitchen scissors and snip in those three places and remove the breasts. Wash off and clean the back of the breasts and there you have two lovely pheasant breasts on the bone. However, the important thing to remember is that there's no skin on these. So if you are gonna roast them, highly recommend covering it with some streaky bacon just to avoid losing all of that moisture and prevent the meat from getting dry. And there you are, it really is as simple as that. This meat will last just the same as fresh chicken you buy from the supermarket, but you can also freeze it for a couple of months without any trouble at all. When it comes to cooking it, cook the whole pheasant just like you would any other roast bird. And with the breast section that we took out of the hen pheasant, you can roast it like that with bacon on top of it. Alternatively, you can very easily take the breasts straight off the bone and use them just like you would any standard chicken breast. If there's one thing you take away from this video, please let it be. Pheasant is just as good as any other bird for eating. And I would say, in my opinion, substantially tastier. If you've never tried it before, please, please do give it a go. And if you like the taste, have a little look on the web for any local shoots, and they will be more than happy to sell you, or even in some circumstances, just give you pheasant. It's tasty, it's local, it's 100% free range. I cannot be enough of an advocate for it. Please, please, please give it a go. You won't be disappointed. As always, if you like this video, please do hit like and please do subscribe to my channel if you want more like this. Any questions, queries or recommendations, please do chuck them in the comments box below. I try and read all of them and reply to any queries you might have. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope it helped and I will see you next time.